If you take a look at Squarespace's website, you'll see it's littered with all kinds of micro-interaction goodness that you can only wish were possible on your own Squarespace website. From stuff like hover transitions and button animations and mouse position interactions, to this section where it looks like Joyce Byers, a man whose job description is restaurant and a slightly angry man is stuck in a scene from Superman. But it's this section we're interested in, this part at the top, which is showing a website passing through a laptop. So what's all of this got to do with Squarespace? Absolutely nothing, but in this video we're going to do something similar. A scrolling website showcase built in Adobe After Effects that you can use in your own website. Okay, before we start, there are a couple of things we're going to need. First, we're going to need a full-length screenshot of the website you want to showcase. I use CleanShot X for all of my screen capture and recording, but there are loads of free plugins for Chrome or Firefox or Safari that can capture a full web page. I'll leave some links below. We'll also need the screen image that we're going to pass the web page through. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description to download the one that I'm using and a couple of extra ones too, but feel free to use your own. You'll find some excellent ones on Unsplash or Pexels. And once we've got our assets, we'll jump into After Effects and get started. Okay, we're going to make a new composition and we'll give this a name. I'm going to call this Showcase, but you can call it whatever you want, Betty or Frank, whatever makes sense to you. And we'll set this to HD 1080 and 30 or 29.97 frames a second and click OK. Next, we'll get our assets and drag them into the project bin. Okay, first off, we'll sort the mask out. So I'm going to grab the MacBook and drop it onto the timeline. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger by grabbing the handle. Left click and hold, then while hold and shift, we'll drag the handle out. Hold and shift keeps the proportions consistent. Okay, that's fine. Now we want to mask out the white on the screen to make it transparent. So making sure the layer is selected in the timeline, we'll grab the pen tool. And then while we're holding shift, we'll click into the four corners of the laptop screen. Hold and shift gives us nice straight lines. Okay, so we've made the mask, but it's the wrong way around, so we need to be able to see the laptop, not just the screen. So to do that, we'll get the selection tool, and then down in the timeline, we'll expand the MacBook layer, then expand masks, and under mode, we'll change add to subtract. And that's it with this layer, I'm just going to minimise all of this stuff, and I'm going to lock the layer to stop us from making any accidental changes. Okay, next to the website, we'll drag this down onto the timeline, underneath the MacBook layer. And over here you can see that it's absolutely massive, so we'll zoom out a bit. Command minus on a Mac, control minus on a PC. And then we can grab either the left or the right handle, and again, left click and hold, and then hold shift and drag in. That's looking pretty good. So we can zoom back in now, command plus on a Mac, control plus on a PC. And then we can drag the screenshot down so it looks like it's at the top of the web page. I'll just set this to fit back in the window. Okay, now we need to add all this excess stuff at the bottom, which if I drag it up, it becomes visible at the top too. So we need to add any bits of our screenshot layer that's outside the boundaries of the screen, so we need to make another mask. Now if we do what we did when we were making the first mask on the MacBook layer, you can see that it fixes the problem. But it doesn't really, because if we move the layer around, you can see that it pulls the mask along with it, and we don't want that. We want the screenshot layer to stay intact so we can pass it through the screen. So to do that, we're going to make sure our screenshot layer is selected. Then we'll go to Layer, New, and Solid. I'm going to make this blue, blue for no other reason than to use that clip of Boris explaining what colour our passports are changing to, and click OK. And your new layer should be sandwiched between your MacBook layer and the screenshot layer. If it's ended up at the bottom or top, just drag it into the middle so you're seeing just the MacBook and blue solid. OK, making sure the blue solid layer is selected, we'll grab the pen tool again. And again, while we're holding Shift, we'll click into the four corners of the screen. We can actually go a little bit further than the edges just to give ourselves a bit of space. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to go back to the selection tool. And then over in the layers panel, we'll select our screenshot layer. And under track mat, we'll change this from no track mat to alpha mat. And the name of our layer above, which in our case is solid blue. And there we go. If we move the screenshot around now, you can see it's masked just to the screen area. So now we can start adding the animation to pass the web page through the screen. Now bear with me on this one. When we start adding the keyframes, it'll look a bit linear and rubbish, but we'll sort that out at the end. OK, so we'll expand the screenshot layer and then expand the transform options. And as we've just mentioned, we're going to be using keyframes to animate the screenshot layer. And in particular, we want to set some keyframes to the position's y-axis, which is this second number next to position. So at the start of our timeline, we'll add the first keyframe by clicking the stopwatch icon next to the position property. And you can see we've got this blue dot on the timeline to signify the first keyframe. So let's move forward in the timeline and adjust the position of the screenshot by dragging the y-axis number until you reach a part that you want to reach 
and you can see we've got another keyframe on the timeline now. Let's come back to the beginning of the timeline, and if we play back by pressing the spacebar, it should scroll down to the position we selected. Okay, let's move on to the next keyframe. We want it to be a short pause, so we'll move forward in the timeline to the point where we want the next scroll to start. And because this is going to be a pause in the scroll, we want the position to stay the same between these two points. To keep it the same, we'll simply add a new keyframe by clicking the Add Keyframe icon. Then we'll move forward in the timeline to change the position again. Then it's just a case of repeating these steps until you get to the point where you want to start scrolling back to the top. So move forward, keyframe, move forward, change position, and so on. Okay, so now we're at the point where we want to think about scrolling back to the top. So we've got our last pause keyframe, and after this we need to get the position from the very first keyframe. So we'll come back to the beginning of the timeline, and you can see that the position was 3777.2. Yours might be different than this. So back to the end, and we'll manually put this position in. And if we play it back, there we go. Now if like mine some of your scrolling bits are too fast or too slow or your pause bits are too short or too long we can adjust these by moving the keyframes around. So we can close the gap between these keyframes to speed the animation up or increase the gap to slow it down. Or we can select all of these keyframes and move them around. So this is where you can play around and get it looking exactly how you want. Okay the last thing before, well actually the second to last thing before we export the file is to get rid of the harsh linearness on scroll to make it look a bit more natural. To do that we'll highlight all of the keyframes, right click on any one of them and go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. And then all of your keyframes should turn into these little hourglass icons. And now if we play it back it all looks more natural. Okay definitely the final thing now before we export the file and that is if you're going to be using this on a website, which more than likely you are, we're going to have to convert it to an mp4 and mp4s don't support a transparent background, so we're going to have to add in a background colour that matches our website. Again, simple enough to do. So let's say we want to put the video into this page, you can see that it's not quite white, it's sort of an off-white, slightly grey colour. I'm going to get the colour of this page using a plugin for Chrome called Colorzilla, or if you're using Squarespace or Webflow or Wix or any other site builder, you can get the colour directly from your settings there. Back in After Effects we'll go Layer, New and Solid and paste the hex code into the layer colour options. And then we'll need to drag this new solid layer right to the bottom of the layers panel. And we are ready to export. Ok the export, this could have been a video in itself given all the export options in Adobe Media Encoder and all the file formats that are supported in a HTML video player. But I just want to keep this as simple as possible so we'll do a quick render from After Effects and then we'll compress and convert the file to an mp4 using a free app called Handbrake, link in the description. Ok so we'll make sure our showcase or whatever you named your composition selected, then we'll go to File, Export and Add to Render Queue. And then at the bottom you'll see it's ready to render. I'm just going to leave all these settings as they are, and we can set where the file's saving to in the Output to options. And then click Render. And that is it for After Effects, now I'm going to open Handbrake and bring in the file. Ok this is Ambrick, we know it is because it says right there, and it's really simple to use so we'll go to open source, and find our showcase.mov, and open. Then under the summary tab we'll make sure the format's set to mp4, and under the video tab we can bring the quality down slightly to reduce the file size, and then star Q. And that's it, we've converted the file to be used in a HTML video player, so I've got another video explaining how to set up the video player, which I'll link above now. But for now, that's it. Thanks ever so much for watching, I hope you found this useful. If you did, leave us a thumbs up below. If you're not already, consider subscribing to see more stuff like this. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. See ya.